All right. Well, our body is drying from the super glue and everything. I figure now it's time to modify your mouse trap. Now, if the teacher says you have to have the little flap thing here, now normally it's metal, this one, this brand has a plastic one. If the teacher says you need to have it and that is how you activate your mouse trap, then don't remove this. However, if he says you can modify your mouse trap as long as you don't tighten the spring or anything like that, everything else is okay. I'm going to show you how to improve your durability um, and lighten this mouse trap up so that way your car can go that much faster. Because we're only dealing with a couple grams here, but that'll help a lot to how light the body is on the trap. Alright, first step, obviously, if you have a brand new mouse trap like this one, is that little thing right there. Just want to lift that up. Ah, uh -huh, it's gone. Alright, next step. What you want to do here, like I said, if he says you cannot remove this piece of it, then don't. I don't want you getting in trouble at school. But if you can, take pliers. See how there's like a little bit of a, a metal hoop thing there. Just stick those in. Yank that sucker right out. So now you're just left with a bare mouse trap. Alright. Now, the next step after this... This is where the third paper clip comes in handy. Once again, I'm going to take the paper clip. Oops, sorry, hit my knee with the table. Fold it out like so. And leave as much slack as you can for this, alright? But at the same time, keep the ends even. So like this right there, I didn't move anything on this side, and I just clipped the other end off. So you got one. Two, like that, all right? Now, once again, uh, if it doesn't fit, you're going to have to peel away the plastic, and that'll take a little bit of time, but it'll be a lot easier than trying to force um, paper clips with plastic stuff on it down a small hole than it would be if you just took it off and made life a whole lot easier. What you're going to do to modify the mousetrap for, for reliability, so that way you can use this over and over again, now this, yeah, I'm going to have to use two hands for this because the trap, I don't want it to bounce up. Now you see how it's cheaply, any mouse trap, cheaply, you've got two little staples here and there. And they're only meant to be used once to kill that mouse. So if they're used multiple times, the spring tension will eventually hoist these things up and your spring will go launching off in some random direction unless you modify it the way I'm going to show you how to. Hold your trap down. Take your pliers, and hoist that, that right out of there. Now, without letting go of the trap, replace it with a paper clip. Uh -huh. Now, I went ahead and did that. Oh, maybe I can fit it down there all right. Okay, now this part, uh, just after you have it in back in the holes where it is, still holding onto the spring, flip it upside down, push that thing right through to the other side. Now it should be okay because it's pretty secure. Just fold it back if you need to. Keep pushing. need to. You can even take the pliers and push it down that little bit more. Not too much like I just did because then you'll uh, your mouse trap won't flip that easily. Alright. Now you see what I've done here. you got all that extra. Just take it once you have extra on one side. Fold it down. It's pinned. This you do that to the same. You do that to the other side of the mouse trap, and I guarantee you, your mouse trap will never break ever. As a matter of fact, if you even, yeah, it's just it's the perfect modification for a mouse trap. I forgot to tell you to do this uh, when you're modifying your mouse trap. If you can get rid of the little tongue thing that that sets it off for a regular mouse trap, 
don't forget, you can also get rid of the little hook thing on the end. That is what holds that what holds the uh, the springboard this thing down. So that way you are a com you have a completely stripped mousetrap now. It's as light as it can possibly be. Got your attachments here, so it's guaranteed never to break on you, no matter how many times you use it. Almost ready to attach it to the body of the mousetrap car. Next, let's cut up the axles for the body, and then we can show you how to build the wheels. All right, this will be our axle. Now, as you can see, you got the long bent part right here. Um, if it's bent, straighten it up. This is our clothesline, in case you didn't know what it was. All right, the parts you're going to use for the axles are going to be right here. And if you need to have extra, cut up the other one so it's going to be right there. So I'm going to go do that now, show you what it looks like afterwards. All right, I should mention, just to prove a point, before you cut any more than one side to make your axle, make sure that you only want to have about an inch of slack from where the parts are that hold the wheels out from the car so that way the wheels don't rub against the body and at the same time you don't want them too wide because then uh, I mean you know granted it could make it a little more stable but it'll add weight to the car so you don't want to add much more than about an inch on each side so if I was to cut that right there you know just need to guesstimate once you attach it to the car just to get an idea uh, how much slack you need that should be about good I'll finish cutting up and then show you the end result Alright, as you can see, I've cut the two axles down, so they're right about the same size. I just need to fit them in a little better. Now, as you can see, on the front uh, on the front and the back, especially the front, like I said before, there's a lot of wheel wobble. Now, you don't want that. So, what you're going to do to counter this and at the same time make it act like a washer, take a straw, and you're going to put it so it sticks out about, oh, let's say that much, you know, for each side, cut that up, um, and that will then fit inside the front, it should fit inside the front and back of the axle holders, so that way there'll be a lot less wheel wobble. Alright, now as you can see what I've done here, crucial thing, um, you won't, you can put you should be able to put the uh, straw through the front, like I said, because that's the bigger one. For the smaller one, you can't do that, and you don't want to do that. You can have them out here on the side so the wheels don't rub up against the sides of the car. However, the axle in the center has got to be exposed so that way you can wrap the string around it. So, once you've uh, cut out, I'll show you again, cut out your straw. So you've got a bit sticking on each side, and yeah. so it's a bit like washers. I'm going to show you how to make the wheels for the car.